Hi there, it's me, Reiji, and today we will be learning how to predict the image on a convex mirror using the ray method or the ray diagram. But before that, let us know what a convex mirror is. It is a curved or a spherical mirror wherein its reflective surface is on the outside of the curvature or on the bulging part of the mirror. Therefore, we are going to place the object on this side of this diagram. Now, as you notice, the diagram is illustrated similarly to the concave mirror wherein the arc of the mirror is a part of a greater circle. It has a focus, a center, and a vertex. However, make sure that you allot a space on this side because that's the place we are going to, to illustrate the object. Now, before we continue, we must uh, remember the following rules in how to predict the behavior of a light beam using the ray method. Now, first, the incident ray, uh, if it is aligned with the focus, it will be reflected parallel with the principal axis. Now, if the incident ray, which is a ray from the object, is parallel with the principal axis, it will be then reflected aligned with the focus of the mirror. And finally, if the incident ray is aligned with the center, it will then be reflected aligned with the center of curvature. So let's have our example here. Now, you will notice that the object is represented by an arrow to denote, to denote its orientation and its size. Now, currently, it is located above the principal axis. So let us see what happens to it when we show it in front of a convex mirror. So let's start with an incident ray which is aligned with the focus. Now, what I, I like to do about that is I extend it to the other side of the mirror. However, uh, the incident ray only stops at the surface of the mirror because that is the point where it is reflected. Now, what happens when it hits the surface if it is aligned with the focus? According to the table above, it will then be reflected parallel with the principal axis. So let us do that. Okay. Okay. Next, let us move on to illustrating a line which is parallel with the principal axis. So again, let's start at the same point and make a parallel line with the principal axis. Okay? Now, according to uh, the table, when the line is parallel to the principal axis, okay, when it hits the mirror the reflected ray should be aligned with the focus. Now again, what I like to do about that is to create a line that extends towards the other side of the mirror, just like this. However, that is not the reflected ray because the reflected ray should be located on uh, the area where the object is. So we are going to extend it on to the other direction, just like that. Okay? Now, after doing that, make sure to erase uh, the other side, okay? Because this is not the reflected ray. And finally, if the incident ray is aligned with the center, it will be reflected back to the center. So again, let us do the same technique. We extend the line towards the center, just like that. Okay? And then draw the reflected ray. Now, notice that the reflected ray, even if you extend them, they would not intersect. So what should we do in this case? We should draw 
a line opposite of the reflected ray, which is called the virtual ray. Now, usually the virtual ray is represented by a broken line because these are non-existent light beams that are just images shown in front of the mirror. So let us do that. I'm going to show it as purple. Okay, and as a broken line. So first, we have a reflected ray which is aligned with the focus. So let's do that. So we have an opposite ray which is aligned with the focus, a virtual ray. Another here, which is aligned with the center. And finally, another one which is parallel with the principal axis, just like this one. Notice that the three virtual rays have intersected at the same point. What does it mean? It means that the point of the object in which the light rays originated is projected on that point behind the mirror. Okay, so how do we interpret what we have illustrated? So first, uh, I like to draw the image. So usually I draw the image uh, on the intersection. Just like this one. So that we could see the changes that had happened, okay, and compare it to the object itself. So let's make it a different color so that it could easily be seen. Okay. Now, notice that the object is relatively smaller than the original size of the object. So it is smaller. Another is that it is located above the principal axis. It did not change its orientation so therefore, it is still upright. And finally, you will notice that the image is projected or is created behind the mirror instead of the front. Therefore, if you place a screen anywhere in front of the mirror, there will be no image formed. So how do we uh, label this? So first... Just as mentioned, it is still upright. Okay. Next is it is uh, smaller than the object in front of the mirror. And finally, it is a virtual image. So that concludes our uh, video for today. Make sure to put a like and subscribe and goodbye for now. See ya!